Hi Scouts, Mr. Chris here, and today we are going to work on your Bear Claw Adventure, which is a required adventure to earn your Bear Badge. If you have your Bear Book, go ahead and open it to page 51, and let's get started. Now for this adventure, we have to learn about three common designs of pocket knives, learn knife safety and earn your whittling chip, and do one of the following. Using a pocket knife, carve two items, or demonstrate how to cut a piece of rope, twine, or fishing line, open a sealed box without damaging the contents, open a can with the can opener on your pocket knife, remove and replace the screws on an object with the screwdriver tool on a pocket knife, and open a letter. So, let's get started. So, Scouts, Requirement 1 says we have to learn about three different kinds of pocket knives. They are the jackknife, the pen knife, and the multi-purpose knife. Now, let's get started with the jackknife. A jackknife is a good tool for campers and fishermen. It is hinged at only one end and may have one or two blades. Sometimes, one blade has a very sharp point, like this one, while other blades have a more rounded point. Some jackknives and other knights, knives have locking blades. That means you have to push a release, which is right here, this little metal piece right here, before you can close the blade, like this. Push it over to the side, and the blade closes. Locking blades prevent you from accidentally closing the blade on your fingers. Now this is a basic jackknife has one blade, it hinges on one end, there's nothing over here, and it has the lock. So to close this one, I just push my thumb over, start the knife closing, and then I can close it like a normal knife. Now, the second knife is a pen knife, and this is my pen knife. A pen knife is small and lightweight. You can see it's much smaller than a jackknife. So it's very easy to carry in a pocket. It hinges at both ends. See if I can get it open here. Hinges at both ends. See this blade hinges on this side, this one on this side, and has one or two blades at each end. So this one has one blade on each end. Pen knives were originally designed to cut and sharpen quills used for writing. Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence with a quill pen. So I like this knife a lot because like your Cub Scout book says, it's very small. It goes in my pocket and I barely even know it's there. And it's handy for most things a den leader has to do around camp because you scouts have your knives and I don't have to do a lot of the cutting work anymore. Now, a multi-purpose knife. This one right here, this is an official Cub Scout multi-purpose knife. Multi-purpose knives can be used to do many things. In addition to one or two blades, which the Cub Scout one has one blade, the multi-purpose knife might also include a can opener, which this one has a bottle opener, scissors, leather punch, tweezers, and screwdrivers. So this one the bottle opener is right here, it's this little hook, and then it's got a screwdriver tip on top. It also has a leather punch. This is really handy if you need to add a hole to your leather belt because you are getting bigger or smaller. And it has the single knife blade. These knives can be fun to have, but all those extra pieces can get in your way when you're just trying to carve or cut some string. Also, the more tools your knife includes, the heavier it will be. Pick a multi-purpose knife that only has the tools you need. Now, Mr. Chris doesn't carry a Cub Scout knife, he carries a Swiss Army knife, and this is another multi-purpose knife. It has one blade, it has a leather punch, but after I close those two, it also has 
a bottle opener and screwdriver, just like the Cub Scout knife, and it has a can opener with another little screwdriver on top. So this is what I carry, and it's a pretty handy knife. It does most of the things I need it to do. It's a little bit lighter than the Cub Scout knife, a little bit bigger than my pen knife, and easier to carry than the jack knife. Now, regardless of what knife you're using, all the same safety rules still apply. And this is a little bit of a long one, but I have to read these rules to you, Scouts, so we can all understand what we need to do to use our knives safely. So, requirement two, learn knife safety and earn your whittling chip. It is very important to be safe when you use your pocket knife. In this requirement, you will learn the rules of knife safety and earn your whittling chip. When you have earned your whittling chip, you will be allowed to carry your pocket knife to designated Cub Scout activities. Your parent or den leader will tell you when you may bring your knife. Always keep your whittling chip card with you when you carry your knife. So, knife safety rules to learn and live by. A knife is a tool, not a toy. This is the first rule because it's the most important, Scouts. This is not a toy. You can cut yourself. You can cut somebody else. Okay? It's a very important tool. We have to respect it. We need to know how to sharpen a knife. A sharp knife is safer than a dull knife because it's less likely to slip and cut you. We need to keep the blade clean and dry. If you keep it wet and dirty, it'll start to rust. The edge will get dull. And then remember the last rule. A dull knife is more likely to hurt you than a sharp knife. Never carry an open pocket knife. We always close them and put them away before we're going to be moving. When you are not using your knife, close it using the palm of your hand and put it away. So, I'm going to show you with mine. I open it. I'm going to hold it with my fingers on the edges. Notice that the channel that the knife blade goes into is open. I'm going to take the palm of my hand, keep my thumb and my fingers open, and push the knife blade closed until it clicks closed. Now that is a safe knife. When you are using the cutting blade, do not try to make big shavings or chips. Cut slow and steady. Make a safety circle. Before you pick up your knife to use it, stretch your arm out and turn in a circle. If you cannot touch anyone or anything else, it is safe to use your knife. While using your knife, be sure to watch in case someone walks toward you and gets too close. If that happens, put your knife away until it is safe to continue. So, we practice this at Scouts with, uh, with our den, and they have to do their safety circle and be sitting in a safe place to use their knives. Okay, and we all have to be careful because sometimes we have little brothers or sisters running around and they don't know knife safety or even younger Scouts who haven't earned their whittling chip yet. So as a bear scout, using your pocket knife, it's up to you to make sure everyone is safe around you. Always cut away from you, never toward you. So, what that one means is when you're using your knife, say you're holding a block of wood and you're whittling. You don't want to be cutting towards you, okay? You always want to cut away. That way the knife is always moving away from you and not towards your body. Never hand a knife to someone else blade first. Learn and use the eye contact method of handing a knife to someone else. Do not release the knife until the other person makes eye contact with you and acknowledges he or she is receiving the knife. So, the way I do it with my den is if one person wants to hand a knife to the other one, first off, the knife is closed. The person who has the knife hands the knife out, looks at the person they're trying to hand it to and says, here's the knife. The person who's trying to take the knife grabs the knife, looks at the person who's handing it to them and says, I've got it. Only then does the person handing the knife over let go and let the other person have the knife. But that knife always has to be closed when it's being handed over. Never use a knife on something that will dull or break it. So we don't use our knife blade to pry into things, to try to lift things up like lids or... 
Um, try to pry rocks out of the dirt. Okay, rocks will dull your knife. Dirt will dull your knife. Metal will dull your knife. So we use it for cutting wood, rope. Um, we can cut into boxes with it to open up boxes. We can open up letters with it. And um, yeah, that's about it, scouts. Don't use it on something that's going to hurt it because then you have to sharpen it. And sharpening a knife can take a long time. Never throw a knife for any reason. I know you see it on TV and in the movies. Your pocket knives are not meant to be thrown. That is very unsafe. Okay? Never do that. Always think before you cut. Do not use your, sharp, your knife to strip bark from a tree or to carve your initials into something that does not belong to you. And again, I'm sure a lot of you scouts have seen this at scout camp or at other places where people carve their names into things or they carve shapes or they strip bark off of trees. We don't do that with our knives, okay? If it doesn't belong to you, you don't carve it. And we never take bark off of live trees. We only take off of dead trees, okay? Now, once you scouts understand these safety rules and agree to abide by the pocket knife pledge, complete your project, and have your den leader sign your card, you will have earned your whittling chip, okay? Now, the pocket knife pledge, and I'm going to read it for you here, and I'm going to post it in the description of this video so you scouts can go over it at home with your parents or your den leaders. The pocket knife pledge states, I understand the reason for safety rules. I will treat my pocket knife with the respect due a useful tool. I will always close my pocket knife and put it away when I am not using it. I will not use my pocket knife when it might injure someone near me. I promise never to throw my pocket knife for any reason. And I will use my pocket knife in a safe manner at all times. So do you think you scouts can do that? I hope so, because a pocket knife is the most useful tool a Cub Scout can have. And I remember when I was a Bear Scout, it was the very first thing I did was earn my whittling chip so I could carry my pocket knife. So, part of using a pocket knife is being able to keep it sharp. So, now I'm going to teach you how to sharpen a pocket knife. All right, scouts. Now it's time to learn how to sharpen a knife. Now, Mr. Chris keeps all of his knives pretty sharp, but this one actually has a little spot on the blade that has some damage on it. So, we're going to see if we can't sharpen that dull spot out, okay? Now, if you open up a pocket knife and you look at the blade, you'll see a very thin line right near the edge of the blade, the cutting edge. And you'll notice that that line is at a different angle than the rest of the knife, okay? That angle is going to tell you where you have to hold your knife on the sharpening stone. Now, this is a sharpening stone, and I've had this one since I was a scout. So it's seen some sharpening. It's got a dark side and a light side, and that's two different stones. The, hard, the dark side is the coarse grit. Okay, and that's going to put an edge on the knife. The light side is a fine grit. It's a smoother stone. It's not as rough. And that is going to clean up that edge and make it super sharp. Okay? So, to sharpen a knife with a wet stone, which is what this is, first thing we're going to do is lay the stone down in front of us. Secondly, I'm going to add some water to that stone, and that is going to help make sure that the knife doesn't wear the stone out. Okay, it acts like a lubricant. This is a little bit messy, so make sure your parents are okay with you doing this on their dining room table. I already asked Miss Christina and she's okay with it. So to sharpen your knife, you're going to lay it down on the stone and you're going to wiggle the blade up until you can feel it lay on that edge, that cutting edge, okay? And this one's at a little bit of an angle. I'll turn it sideways so you guys can see what kind of angle it's at. So that's flat. If we just lift it up until it rides on that angle right there, that's the angle we're going to keep with this knife blade. If we're too low or too high, we're going to put a different edge on the knife and it's not going to be as sharp. So we're going to lay it down flat on the stone. We're going to lift it up until we feel it on the cutting edge and we're going to push away from us. We're not going to push down hard. We're just going to let the knife go across the stone. Now, when you get to the end, flip the knife over, 
get it up on that cutting edge and pull it back towards you. This is the only time you will pull a knife towards you. We're not cutting and we're not pushing very hard. We're just dragging the knife across the stone. We're letting the stone do the work. Again, we lay our knife blade down, find our edge, and then back again. Now, for really dull knives, you might have to do this 20, 30 times in each direction to fix the blade. If you keep your knife sharp though, you almost never have to use the coarse side of a stone. You can use the fine side of the stone to help just keep the edge honed. We always want to do the same amount of strokes on both sides because if you do too many strokes on one side and the, not the other, you'll cause an uneven edge and the knife won't be sharp anymore. Let's see. Oh yeah, that spot's almost completely gone now. So, do a couple more strokes and then we'll go to the fine edge and hone it. And all that honing does is take off the burr that's on the edge of the knife blade. So when you sharpen a knife with a stone, what happens is a little piece of metal, because your knife blade edge is like triangle, a little piece of metal gets folded up and hooks over the top. And that's not very sharp. So when you go back and forth, car, uh, sharpening your knife, you're moving that burr back and forth to the other side. What we want to do with the fine stone is just get rid of that burr entirely so our knife blade is a perfect triangle. So we'll flip over to the fine side. Give it some water, and we'll do the same thing. Now see if you can hear the difference in sound that the fine side makes compared to the coarse side. about good it doesn't take much once you keep your knife sharp it'll stay sharp okay all right scouts so now we have a sharp knife now I'm gonna give you a secret that'll help you with whittling it's called making a stop cut now when you're whittling we always whittle away from us but how do we stop from whittling so far that it takes off a big chunk of wood well, we can use a stop cut. So here is just a little piece of wood, okay? And maybe I'll turn this into a gnome later. But if I were to just whittle it, I'm gonna pull off big strips of wood. See how long those are? Say I only wanted to pull off a little bit of wood though, I would make a stop cut. I would just press my knife blade in and always work with the bottom part of your knife blade. You have more control of a knife if you use that bottom part of the blade. Up here, you have less control of the knife. So using the bottom part of my blade, I'll just push in and make a little bit of a notch. And I don't know if you can see that on camera, but I made a little notch right there, okay? Now, when I whittle towards that notch, it stopped. The shaving that I just took off stopped right at that notch. It didn't go any farther. That's called a stop cut. Okay, and you can use those when you're trying to make detail in your carvings, your whittling. So, Scouts, 
accidents can happen even when we're being safe with our knife. Mr. Chris has quite a few scars on his hands from pocket knives that have slipped throughout the years. And although it can be scary, as Bear Scouts, there is some first aid that you should know and you can use if you or one of your fellow scouts gets cut using a pocket knife. Now, this is only for minor cuts. If it's a very serious cut and there's a lot of blood, you need to find an adult immediately. But for small little cuts and scrapes, we could take care of those ourselves. Simply wash the cut with soap and water, and I know it's gonna sting a little, but it's cleaning the wound and that's what we want. Okay, after that, apply antibiotic ointment to the wound, and then put a Band-Aid on it. That'll keep the wound clean and dry. Now, if it's a pretty good cut, you might have to replace the Band-Aid every day or two until it's healed, but it'll heal up just fine. Now, even if you do the first aid yourself, because it's a small cut, you should still tell an adult that it happened. That way they can make sure that it's nothing too major. But I'm sure you scouts will be just fine putting a Band-Aid on some small cuts. Now for this video, I don't have time to teach you scouts how to whittle. It would take way too long. Sometimes Mr. Chris can take hours to whittle one small arrowhead. But if you have it at home, you can get a bar of soap and with your parents' permission, you can whittle that soap into a bear, a fish, or the easiest one to start out with is an arrowhead. Now remember, if you're gonna do the whittling part of this adventure, you have to whittle two different items, okay? But the alternate, the alternate is to alternate. use our knife to open a letter, cut some string, open a box without damaging the contents, open a can with the can opener on our pocket knife, and use the screwdriver tool on our pocket knife to open up a screw. So, I think I have just the thing to teach us that, Scouts. See, I've got a box here, and I think we all know who this is from. There's a letter, though. Let's see. To Daddy. Now, to open a letter, and I'll get the box out of the way first so we can read. To open a letter with your knife, it's really easy. We're going to open up our knife blade. After doing our safety circle, and on every letter, there is the flap. And the flap has a little bit of glue on it that holds the letter closed. So what we can do is stick our knife in the edge of the flap and just pull up and backwards just slightly. And if your knife is sharp like Mr. Chris's is, you don't need any pressure really to just open up the top of the letter. Once it's open, we close our knife and put it away. Now let's see what this letter has to say. Oh, it's a long one. Dear Daddy, I know you are going to make us eat peas tonight with dinner. I don't like peas, so I hid the last can of them in this box. If you can cut the rope and cut the tape without popping the balloons inside, you can have the can of peas. But good luck opening the can, because I hid the can opener. Love, Tristan. Ooh, that sneaky Tristan. He really doesn't like peas. And if that last can of peas is really in this box, we've got a lot of work ahead of us. So, I think we can do it, though, because we know our knife safety rules, we know our knife pledge, and we have a sharp pocket knife. So, we already opened a letter Let's open this rope. Now, this is double knotted. Tristan knows I'm not very good at getting double knots open. So let's cut the rope. To cut rope, you put your pocket knife open and under the rope and push up slightly on it. That's gonna push the rope against the knife edge. Then all you gotta do is move your knife slowly back and forth and it'll cut through the rope, just like that. That wasn't very hard, was it? I didn't think so. Now, now we have to the open trip. the box. And he told me there's balloons in here, and if I pop them, he's not eating peas. So I have to be careful. If I plunge this knife all the way into that box to use the bottom of the blade, I'm going to pop those balloons. So what I have to do is put my finger on the spine of the knife, which is the back side of the knife where there's no cutting edge. And I have to put it pretty close to the top of the knife. 
that means that only that much of the blade is going to poke through the box. And I think if it's that little, it won't cut anything inside. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to push the knife blade in just a little bit and slowly drag it across with my nut, with my finger riding across the top of that box. And what that's going to do is make sure my blade doesn't go deep into the box. Once I do that, I could do the same thing on the edges, okay? Spin the box. Now, once I'm done with that, I can close the knife, and let's see if we can get inside. Look at that. No popped balloons. Good job, Scouts. And look at that. I found the peas. All right. But that Tristan, he's pretty smart. They don't call him Tricky Tristan for nothing. He stole the can opener. How am I going to get into these things? I have an idea. Remember I told you earlier about multi-purpose knives? A lot of them have can openers on them. Well, right here is Mr. Chris's can opener, and that's my way into this can of peas. So you can see the bottom of that can opener is a hook. That's going to go underneath the lip of the can. And then this part here, this curve shape, is a blade. Now it's not a sharp blade like on your pocket knife blade, but it's sharp enough to get through this can. So what I'm going to do is hook under the edge and then poke through the can. Oh, we're in. And we're just going to work our way around the can until we get it all the way open. Now, unlike the can opener that's in your kitchen, this leaves a very sharp edge on the lid of the can. So be careful or have an adult help you open the can if you open a can with your pocket knife like this but it will get you into a can in a pinch or out in the woods and you don't have a can opener with you. We're almost there. As always, we'll leave a little bit on the edge of the can, clean off our can opener, close our knife, and put it away. And there we are, we are in to the peas. Well, Scouts, it looks like Tristan is having peas for dinner tonight. I can't wait to tell him. I'm going to go put these away quick. Well, Scouts, we have one final task to complete with our pocket knife to earn the Bear Claw belt loop. This is Tristan's little brother's race car, and the batteries are dead on it. So, I need to get inside this thing and replace the batteries. And I think we can do that with the screwdriver tool on our pocket knife. It's that little tiny tip on top of the can opener. So this has one screw right there to open up the batteries. All I'm going to do is push my pocket knife screwdriver into the screw and give it a couple turns until it comes out. Now it is easier to just get a screwdriver, but this will work almost all the time. And there you go. Guess I can replace the batteries now, huh? He's going to be super happy. He loves this car. Well, Scouts, if you did everything I just did on this video, then you have accomplished everything you need to do to earn your Bear Claws belt loop. Make sure you tell your den leader so he, can sign, he or she can sign you off and you can get credit for it. As always, remember, your knife is a tool, not a toy. And in closing, may the great Cub Master of all great scouts be with us till we meet again. Good night, scouts.